Hi everybody and welcome. I want to show you how I do my rhubarb. I cut it all today because it was getting so big. I have a ton of it and I want to show you I have a recipe for um, a strawberry rhubarb pie. I have a recipe that I'm going to be cutting stuff for rhubarb bread. I'm going to try that this year in my produce stand. And rhubarb cookies. So on these recipes, the rhubarb pie calls for uh, three cups of diced uh, rhubarb. So I'm dicing that up and putting it in a bag and I'm going to freeze a bunch. And I have on here what it's for. It's for a pie. This is three cups. But when I do my breads and my cookies, I like to use the food processor uh, over here because it helps it. And the same thing when I do my jams. It helps it break down a little bit faster. And I don't want... It calls for cube, um, like the diced. But this takes so long to break down. And then a cookie... I don't want big chunks of this or bread. I'd rather have it sliced, um, shredded, kind of like a zucchini. So all I do is um, I cut it all off. I cleaned it. This is going to be for the pie because it breaks down. And the same thing when I do the jam. I, I'll do the food processor and dice it real small and then cook it. It cooks down way faster. So it's just a helpful little hint. And this calls for... Um, for the pie, it calls for three cups. And you like it a little bit chunkier for a pie. So I just dice it up. And uh, let me get it over here. I'm just dicing it up and measuring it out. I'm not making it too big. I'm just going through and dicing it all up. Sometimes you'll get the um, string kind of like celery. I just pull it off, throw it in the sink, and be done with it. But I wanted to show you how I process all mine. And then I can have it for this winter, too. Uh, for when I want a strawberry rhubarb pie, I can dice up the strawberries, get them out of the garden while they're uh, fresh, freeze them. I do the same thing with blueberries, so I have fresh pretty much fresh fruit um, all year. All right, so we need two more cups of that. And I had a ton of it out there. I'm gonna freeze some too and take it to my sister. Her rhubarb's not doing too good, she's in Tennessee. But this is what I like to do and how I like to prepare, prepare mine. We have a real sandy area. We live in pretty much a lot of sand. Rhubarb likes sand. And I put some asparagus by it, but the asparagus is about five years old. And it really, they say to plant it by rhubarb, but I mean, out of 20 plants, I got a couple little stalks. So we never really get much rhubarb. I don't think it likes the sand um, up here. So, now that we got two cups, I just pull the strings off, got one more cup, and then that'll be another uh, amount for a pie filling. And I just pull that, a lot of times it'll, it'll shred just like a, a celery does. I just... I mean, it's still good in that, but I don't like all that stringiness, so I just get rid of it. A lot of people say it's wasting, but it cooks down. But I just don't like, like it, so I don't want a bunch of stringy stuff that in my pie. So and then after I get done with this, I'll put some um, pectin on it. I know a lot of people don't use that. But it keeps your fruit really fresh, even like apples and that. It stops them from discoloring. 
it preserves them pretty good. It's a good preservative. We need a little bit more in there. But cutting takes a lot longer. You'll see, I'll do the processor and you will see how much faster it is to do that. Okay, so now we have the three cups of that. I'm just going to sprinkle just a little bit on the top of here and then I'm going to toss it around and then to make sure it's all covered. You don't got to use a lot of it. This has no taste to it. It just preserves it so that it doesn't turn brown. Then I will put this in here and this will be another one for a pie. And then I'll vacuum seal these too. I put them in here and then I vacuum seal them. But if you don't have a, a vacuum seal, just make sure you get all the air out of them. One thing about when you shred it, it's kind of like zucchini. It builds up a lot of moisture more than the cubes. But all I'm going to do here is I'm just going to cut some chunks so that it breaks down a little bit better and I don't have to cut it as much so it doesn't turn to mush. And I'm just going to put those in there. I have quite a bit of rhubarb. And this is a good start to my winter supply and for my new breads that I'm going to try on my probst. And I sell pumpkin bread, zucchini bread, banana nut bread, blueberry bread, peach bread. And they make I make real good money off them, so it's extra income for me. And this is only two cups you need for this one. For the cookies and for the bread. Then I just put this on and I pulsate it. much save time and then I'll sprinkle my stuff in here right now and I don't have to toss it up and then it's all done I'll take that off and I'll measure out two cups and then we'll have our rhubarb for our bread and rhubarb for our cookies Okay, so that's one cup, and this is way faster, but to have a pie, I don't want it all mushy, and I like doing this for my, um, like I said, my jams. It, it speeds up the cooking time because you got to, you know, break it all down before you can do anything. Okay, so now we got another cup of that, and we have one for another bread or a cookie. It's a two-cup one. So I wanted to show you how I did that, and I hope that you enjoy, and have a blessed day.